Hey guys, I'm Cameron Kirkconnell and um, today I've got about two hours in between taking the kids to school and going to do some work and we wanted fresh fish for dinner. So another amazing thing about being down here in South Florida is on a high tide you get really clear water in very shallow water. I think it's 10 feet deep here and I'm not trying to get anything crazy, I'm just trying to get dinner. So um, we're probably going to see sheep's head, we're probably going to see a lot of the snook that we've been fishing for, um, hopefully some snappers and maybe some surprise fish, but I'm gonna get ready. I've got a really basic set of gear today. The water's warm, so I've got a Salt Life rash guard. Um, I've got my mask, and I wanted to show you, like when people get in the boat, multiple people have a whole bunch of different gear, and everybody has booties, everybody has fins, everybody has gloves and a mask. My stuff is always kept like this, so that the mask is around the fins, booties are in the fin pocket, and my gloves are in the fin pocket. So when I get ready to go back in the water, I know exactly where my stuff is and I don't have to separate it from everybody else. And I have a sequence <laughs> of putting everything back on and then I'm ready to go before anybody else is ready. But you guys stay tuned. I'm gonna get dressed up here. We're gonna hop in the water and see if we can get some sheep's heads. Sheep's head there. He knew who I was. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get him on this time. to get in the shallow water. You, know, you think sheep's head is easy fishing. It's only about eight feet deep and they don't want anything to do with a big human swimming around. So pretty stoked to get one for dinner. Let's get a couple more. <laughs> this is a cool thing about spear fishing, free diving. You find all kinds of cool stuff. This is a sea urchin and what we call a sea egg. So these are, the, you can see the spines on it. When they die, all their spines fall off and they have this really brittle skeleton that depending on how, what kind it is and how long it's been out there, they, uh, they could be different colors. So this would be a really pretty thing to take home, show the wife and kids. That's actually a really good eating fish. Most people would never shoot this or catch and keep this. These are delicious. One of the best eating fish. People forget about these ones. This is a little bonus. This is a, uh, a look down or a moon fish. And you can see how skinny it is. They're super thin. And you see that big school came by twice the first time I missed them. And they're moving so fast in the shallow water. But luckily I was able to get this one. These things cook up delicious. Got a 
bad morning of uh, living the salt life here. Stuart. Just jumped in for a quick like 10 minute swim. Um, was able to shoot two good fish. Shot a nice sheep's head and a, uh, a look down or moon fish, which are delicious. Um, we're gonna head over to another spot here. The conditions are pretty good. It's right at the top of the high tide, so the water is clear. It's pushed in from, from offshore. And we're only in about eight feet of water. I mean, I get to do some pretty awesome trips around the world and we dive crazy deep and shoot world records and giant fish, but I'll tell you, my passion for spear fishing, I don't care if it's an eight feet shooting little sheep's head or you know, in Tahiti. This is unbelievable to be able to do this this close to home. We're gonna hop back in here and see if we can get a couple more fish. Hey Tim, amazing conditions. It's, it's just so pretty out. Summertime in Florida. Let's go get some more. Woo! Cool that. That was a uh, a pretty tough hunt actually <laughs> for eight feet of water trying to shoot another one of these um, look downs. So I was able to get this one and right as I was getting them to me a big barracuda came up and a big stingray. How cool. It, it's just so amazing to be underwater and just see all this cool stuff coming up. So I need at least one more fish here. So we uh, shifted spots and went back up in the river, which the water is pretty dirty, which is kind of sketchy, but um, it's where the fish are. So the visibility is probably only gonna be like three or four feet. So I'm gonna have the gun like way behind me and the camera is probably gonna see the fish better than I can, to be honest. Um, but there's a good bunch of sheep's head here last time I was here. So I'm gonna try to get maybe one or two more for dinner and uh, we'll see how it goes. Crazy how much is going on down there, isn't it? The technique when it's dirty like this is just to go and sit and lay on the bottom because fish are gonna see you before you see them. So if you just go sit in one place and just let them come to you. There's a couple fish there that were probably legal size, but that was my first dive. So I'm gonna wait and see if we can get something a little bit better here. so that uh, we don't attract the sharks that I know are here. <laughs> I just can't see them. That is exactly what we were looking for. Nice little sheep's head there. Did the same thing I was talking about, just went and laid down on the bottom and let them come to me. And there was a whole bunch of them that time. So I've got a couple more minutes here. I'm gonna see if I can go get another one. I was waiting for something really good because this is going to be my last fish. You hear that big boom? Somewhere here, there's a big fish. I don't know what it is. I would guess that it's a big goliath grouper. And that's as sketchy as the sharks as these big goliaths. You shoot these fish here in Florida and they attack everything. I've had them eat like 100 pound amberjacks, come and bite them even though they can't swallow them. Let's see what we get.
a good way to end it. Right after we saw that huge Goliath. No longer a secret spot, but I challenge you to dive here. Oh, a little bonus. bonus. That was a perfect one to end on there. I had about given up. There's so many Goliath groupers down there and it's such close quarters. Like everything you're seeing is within like three or four feet. And you can see like, there's all kinds of trash down there. There was a bicycle, there's barnacles, there's all kinds of debris and a lot of stuff to get wrapped up on. So I'm trying to be really careful and even just shooting a fish like that, he goes and tangles up. But the problem is compounded when you got a two or 300 pound fish that comes and takes him from you and then wraps up. So I'm happy to be done. That was an amazing morning. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Cameron Kirkconnell.